Okay, we're here with some of the aftermaths of my crash with the Airbus uh, 320. I've taken and glued the wings back together in the middle and re-glued the fuse. It was most of the way broken and uh, just bagged up everything from the, the front. This was the extra wire length and then the nose gear. The only electronic that got damaged was the actual the housings for the, NIS, the uh, EDFs and then the nose gear got pretty well damaged. <laughs> Big surprise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some boiling water and we're going to try to straighten these out. Um, you can see that when it crashed, it clearly hit the nose first. So remember, we're not trying to get it perfect. We're just trying to get it back close to the factory shape. And then, of course, we'll glue it back together. So then when we're done with that, we're going to dip in this fuse. We're going to lose some decals, regrettably, but that's part of it when you crash a plane. So anyway, um, maybe I can pull some of this off here and put it back on later. But either way, we're going to do that real quick and see how it turns out. So you get your water to a, a boil. This might be a little bit fast of a boil, actually. And the idea is you just, just dunk it in. My experience has been the faster you boil it, the quicker it transfers the heat into the, into the foam. And it will start getting bubbly like this. And then you can start shaping it. I think I might actually have a little bit too hot, so I'm gonna cut it off the heat. Um, you can see it bubbles bubbles up the foam a little bit, but it will help to shape it back to where it needs to be. I think I'm rolling a little bit too much on my boil, though. See, and that just popped right off, which, that's not a big deal, I can reattach that. But the idea is when you're done, you just have to come back through and just kind of smooth over the the bumpy parts but what happens is it'll, it'll allow you to relax the foam back into its molded shape now if you overheat it then you'll lose your molded shape and I think I'm just still a little bit too hot so like this spot here where it's cracked that's because the foam wants to relax back to where it was molded into so I'll just hold it in here for a minute can you get a shot in the water? You just wait a second and let it warm up. Basically, once it's warmed up, then you pull it out and you can like shape that thing back to where it wants to be or where it was supposed to be from the manufacturer. It doesn't always work real great, and you can see what's happening is I'm getting a lot of this dimpling. But that dimpling you can take and just smooth out with your thumb. And it basically takes care of it. You do lose some of your detailing, but you know, if you can get your plane back together, usually that's kind of what I'm after. You can see here, we need to get a little heat on this spot here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take this ladle. I'll actually just work. Might have a better time coming from the other side there, behind me on my left side. We're just ladling this hot water straight into this joint here. So the idea is I, I don't really want to dimple the whole thing up because it's really a pain to deal with that stuff. The water seems to be getting a little bit more reasonable temperature wise. So I'm just going to hold it in there. Of course it wants to float so you have to kind of be prepared to hold it tight. And then this bulkhead, this bulkhead we can straighten it. And eventually, this plane will, will relax back into the pre-crash configuration, largely. I mean, it's not going to be an exact thing, but it's going to be close. So, you want to stay off the bottom and sides of your pan if you can, because they will, you know, of course, transfer a little bit too much heat. And remember, we're going from, like, plane no fly to <laughs> back to potentially a usable plane. I can get some new EDFs going so you know if it's not perfect it's not perfect but perfection's what you're after don't crash the plane words of wisdom while it's warm you kind of got to get those little dimples off of there you guys probably can't 
tell good from the video, but when I crashed this thing, it was a little bit scary. It got out of sight. And I thought I was going to end up in a spot where I might be close enough to people to be not so good, so I ended up taking it in the ground. This is off now. I'm just going to run my hot water back up to a higher temperature again. But you can see, just straight edge wise, that we've got this straight corner here now. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's perfect. It's certainly not that. But we're going to have a good possibility now when we take and put CA in there. And, and by the way, I'm using CA. I don't use epoxy for this stuff. It's, it's way too hard to work with epoxy for this sort of thing. If a guy had a really fast setting epoxy, you could maybe get away with it. But it's just it's too hard to hold all this stuff together when you have a crash like this. So, you can see we're really, we're not that far off from having a pretty good finish here. Um, and like I said, you know, we're going to lose our Airbus logoing and the cool logos on the door. And you can go back in and do some different things. But let's uh, get a shot of that there. This one's going to be real fun. Right here is going to be tough. But let's get this other side done here. And what we'll do is we'll just pause the video. Um, and then we're going to get a shot of this. And then we'll pause the video. And we'll show you kind of how it comes out in about two or three minutes of working on it. Okay. Okay, so guys, we're just continuing to work here. I want to give you a quick status update. You can see starting to dimple. So that means we're getting that heat inside internally into this thing and the idea is you just kind of you do have to kind of force it back a little bit I suppose if you're really careful if you're really good with this you can take those dimples right out it's like I was telling my wife I said you're either gonna end up with a plane with a bunch of dimpling on it or you're gonna end up with not a plane so I'll take a dimply plane that flies and you know you can always go back through and work these off superficially because all you have to do is heat the outside but I want to close up this crack and also it'd be kind of nice to get the grass stains off. But you have to be patient. It's very hot. It's not comfortable work because you're working over hot water. But the other thing is that fuse is going to be really tough to get straight because it's all attached to the airplane. I've got crap right above this in the microwave and all that. So I'm going to have to take and move this out to the, to the island. Speaking of, I should start reheating it so I can do that. You can see we're just, it just kind of expands everything so that it's closed and we'll use thin CA to work it. Um, we'll pull it open, put thick CA, and then we'll do thin CA if it doesn't quite close the gap. And the idea is you want all this stuff to be strong again and so you just complete the build. You, um, you want to have all that structural integrity and it's never going to be, it's never going to have the same level of integrity that it did when it was all one piece and molded properly. But you know, I mean, like I said, if you want it to be perfect, just don't crash the plane and it'll be fine. So, and along those lines, guys, if you're flying radio controlled airplanes, you better be ready to crash your planes once in a while because unless you're perfect, you're gonna make a mistake someday. All right, we'll go ahead and pause it and come back here in a few minutes, give you some more before and after. Okay. Okay, guys, we're back a little bit, a little bit after the last update. And you can see this is broken, obviously. We gotta glue that all back together. But at this point, um, I don't wanna say surprising because it's not really a surprise to me that that's going together close. Sometimes what you gotta do is you gotta take and then, now that you've got them back together, you're gonna have to glue them a little bit and then work them back together because you've excited all this this foam into a position that it may not have taken originally um, and we're not we're not quite there yet but like this chunk of foam I have to believe it came from right there maybe yeah it came from right there so there's still still some work to be done here but guys compared to what it was 10 minutes ago it's still a pretty vast improvement um, now I've just got a spend a little bit more time fine-tuning this and here's an example of a nacelle that I had to fix it was it wasn't dinged up quite as bad but the nacelle housing itself just getting that back out of the crush was 
tricky. So we could theoretically get that all glued back up onto this one, except we have to fix the, uh, the fan housing on the EDF. The fan, I think, is okay on this side, and I think the motor is okay, too. So now the toughest part is going to be sticking this end in and trying to get it to come out worth the crap. It's probably not going to be real super easy, so... And then these tires, believe it or not, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to expand these tires back out a little bit, and um, we'll see how that turns out. I think at some point, obviously, I'll have to come up with a new nose gear plan, but for now, I've got the tires, which is nice, so they'll match and look about the right size and everything. So we're going to pause again and come back after we're done dipping that. Okay, guys, we're back with the uh, 320 again. I know this is the same video we've just been pausing it. So now I've got to try to get this straightened out and this straightened out, but I don't want to dip the electronics, so I pull the electronics back into this bag. And I'm gonna take this, whoops, take this out. And you'll be amazed how much this stuff will relax once you get a little heat on it. And I'm just dunking it in water, guys. It's not like anything magical here. Just letting it relax for a minute. You don't want to overdo it because eventually the foam will go back to its totally natural state of balls. See, now it's relaxed a lot. You can see this is relaxed a lot. The only problem is this, this stuff is relaxed maybe a bit more than I would like it to be. But, you know, it's not an exact science, guys. You just kind of get it get the parts lined up where they need to be. Can you get a shot so you can see what's going on? Right here. I'm gonna to try to pull this back, just pull it as straight as you can. I guess some might might argue that you shouldn't have to pull it, just let it relax. Well, yeah, it's not always quite that simple. So what I'm doing here is I'm just giving it a little rock to get the water up a little bit higher on the side of the aircraft. Now this is gonna dimple like crazy. So there's just no getting around that. You can squish the dimples back down. You can't bend it back when it's that far out of whack. Not unless you heat it first. Hot. And be careful, water does get trapped in there sometimes and it'll squish out on your hands and burn you. I'm just kind of finding the nasty divots and I'm pushing it, pushing it in. And then if you have a spot like back here that you have a little bit of a dent on. You can get that later with uh, with your ladle. Or if you have a spot you want to try to if you have a spot you want to try to get that's in an awkward area. Like I want to relax that joint back together there where it's tried to break. The other advantage to this is you do clean some of the debris out so you get a little bit better bonding point when you do go to glue them. And like I was saying, it ain't gonna be perfect, at least it's never been perfect in my experience. Like this bulge, for instance, this bulge, I would really like to bring that bulge in and allow this stuff to relax back forward. So I'm gonna go a little bit more, I just gotta get this Actually, right out of the way. See, I got a thick member inside of here that's preventing me from bending it quite right. So I'm really pushing on it. If it breaks, then that makes it really hard to put back together because when it's broken, when it's all excited like this, it makes a really nasty break. Okay, so guys, it's, it's certainly not perfect, but it's certainly better than it was. I need to probably flip this over possibly and try to ladle a little bit more up into this spot. Just try to, I'm not left-handed, so this is kind of awkward. I could theoretically hold the airplane with my 
left hand and then use a ladle with my right hand. But again, if you wanted it to be perfect, you just wouldn't crash your planes. Because <laughs> the easiest way to avoid this type of repair is to just keep flying and then land it on the wheels rather than landing it in a field where you're not watching. It's pretty good advice, actually. I'm gonna start it's doing amazing. That. I'm gonna start doing that. I knew I was missing some detail. <laughs> All right, so guys, you can see we're getting closer to having the structure the right shape. I'm just taking a little bit at a time. Now, there's nobody saying you can't let this totally, you know, cool and then reheat it, but at a certain point, you are going to weaken this, this foam quite a bit. So you got to be... That looks a lot better than it did before, but it still looks pretty horrendous. So, I mean... But the idea is... I think I can try to work this out a little bit better before I say I'm out of effort. And you can see it's it's really not that horribly far off. Maybe the next step for me is gonna be to put it all back together, glue it together, and then come back to it and ladle and try to work the smoothness back into it. Cause like this spot here, that's one of those spots where that bulge is probably gonna be really hard to manipulate into the right spot until I have it all together. Uh, let's heat up this water. We'll come back to you guys. Okay, so we're going to do this wrap-up video here, or finish up the, the video. Um, as you can see, we've got the front half um, most of the way done. Um, some of the stuff, you just, you just kind of have to glue it, set it up, move it back, glue it, and so on and so forth. Because we've actually bulged the foam a little bit um, in places that we you know, wouldn't have wanted to, but that's just the nature of it. You have to shake all the water out. Um, and then what I'm going to actually do is I'll end up getting these to where they look like they're about right. I'm probably going to have to start by gluing this side on because it's got so much damage. It's going to be really vulnerable and I don't want to leave a bunch of it opened. So we're going to get this glued in. Once we have that glued in, then we're going to work this piece back in as well. And that's when, that's when you can start working your pieces together. And if, if you want to just kind of get a shot of that from the front, um, I want you guys to understand something. This, you know, this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be, it's going to be very close. Um, and when we're all said and done with that, I mean, that, that compared to what it was just a few minutes ago is a huge improvement. It's still not, it's not hundred percent. It's never going to be hundred percent without replacing the fuse. And even doing that is a huge amount of effort. So, but suppose we get this all back together. Um, then we can start clamping this stuff together, you know, wrapping strap and tightening the strap, and then you'll, you'll close these gaps. And you'll end up with a pretty strong plane. Um, one other complication I have to deal with, but this, this is drying right now, so we kind of have to stop the video. But one other complication you want to make sure, if you've got a bag in there, just make sure that the air can get in there so that that humidity and everything will dry out. I'm trying to mitigate some of the risk of, you know, having rust inside the connections on the electrical connections, corrosions, things like that. So, but a lot of these little pieces, I'll have to come in here first and take the CA, work it in, glue it. And the next thing you know, once you have all these little cracks done, you actually have a pretty sound structure again. Um, you know, because like get a shot over here, there's, there's probably five or six major breaks here. Um, and just honestly guys, just don't even worry about your decals at this point. You're, you're going to lose a lot of them. It's just part of the, the deal with crashing. And then like up here, I've got to get this taken care of. And you know, it's going to be a bummer because I mean, look how nice the tail turned out. I mean, the tail's barely damaged. Um, and I've just got this one crack point here. And I've got this one divot here and probably what I'll do is I'll heat this up and then I'll have my wife hold it and we'll bend it back down. And that will force that to totally straighten. And then I'll wipe the, div the divots and it'll be almost, you won't even know it's broken. So up here, you're going to know it's broken. There's no getting around it. And if I have to order two um, motors and then the nacelle kit for this model, then I could conceivably be up and flying without a nose gear. 
Um, so the nose gear is going to be my most complex repair. And like I said, it's the only electronic that damaged was my steerable, uh, excuse me, it's actually the gear door servo. The steerable nose gear, that was fine. Or it was one of the two. I can't remember which one it was, but it was one of the two. Either way. Um, and then, of course, the landing gear itself broke in half. So the housing that holds all the landing gear has to be mounted inside of here. And that's my biggest concern is how am I going to do that? Because I kind of need to get this put together before I can design this. Um, so I'm not going to be able to do it the easy way, which would be sandwich it around a plastic housing that would have everything complete. Um, so the other thing is maybe if I'm smart, I'll figure out a way to wrap this up. Um, maybe with some stretch film and just pull it tight, get it in position so it's relaxed. And then maybe I can heat it a little bit. And that way I can pull it open and put my frame in and then just let it snap back. So haven't decided yet, guys, but for now, we're in a lot better shape than we were 20 minutes ago. Um, and uh, just, oh, just an FYI, I went ahead and took the leading edge slats off the main uh, run of the wing. Oh, it looks like I have a broken hinge point here. I didn't realize that until just now, so I'll have to fix that. And um, I kept my inboard leading edge slats. So everything else is pretty much put back together. So keep watching. We'll keep you up to date on this endeavor. Hopefully it'll look good when we're done.